Do you think it's okay to build a mock-up out of cardboard and cut everything out with a pair of scissors? No, seriously. Do you think it's okay to use tape on your mock-ups and ruin the form like this? If you answered yes to any one of those questions and you think building a cardboard mock-up with hot glue is acceptable, then this video is not for you. My name is Eric Strebel. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. I hope that you like, enjoy, and become a subscriber. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up, and then you hit the bell. Hit the bell again, so you get the little parentheses around it. That way you'll be notified every time I have a new video. Don't forget to check out the design and making merch below. Hoodies, t-shirts, and stickers. For some projects, cardboard, matteboard, chipboard, or whatever you call it, is the ideal material to make your early mock-ups out of. It's very cheap and versatile. Incredibly useful. Some good tools for building stuff out of cardboard and matteboard are a good cutting board, of course, like this Arteza matteboard that I have shown here. Some white PVA or Elmer's glue as it's known here in the US, X-Acto and lots of X-Acto blades, nice sharp ones of course, a ruler, tape, and I like to have a little square. And the little secret ingredient for this project is this squeezable lure lock bottle so I can dispense a very tiny amount of glue and have a lot of control. You can find the link to those below from my eBay store. Let's make something nice and simple. We'll start out with some basic boxes made out of cardboard and chipboard. Let me show you how I make them. I like to use a nice white Bristol board that has a uniform inside. This is a Canson Bristol board and it's the same color white on the inside as it is on the outside. I'm going to start by cutting two strips. One is two inches minus the thickness of whatever board you're using. And the other one is just about two inches thick. So we're going to cut four squares from the thinner strip that is slightly less than the uh, two inches with subtracting the thickness of the board. When we cut these, we're going to cut them to two thicknesses less than two inches because we're going to have a top and a bottom cap that goes on these things. We're going to pre-assemble all four pieces. We're going to use some blue painter's tape because it's not aggressive and it doesn't hold on to the uh, paper very good, but just good enough to glue everything together. And you're going to overlap these four pieces to make a box. So there'll be one overlap on each side. And we're going to tape it all together. The tape keeps the glue from oozing out and getting everywhere. Keeps everything exactly in the right position, just the way you want. I'm going to use a square and a weight here. And we're going to keep it all nice and tight so that it can dry. It won't take that long, actually. The paper soaks up the PVA quite quickly, maybe five minutes or something like that. Now we want to add the end caps, and this is the reason why we made it two thicknesses less than uh, the two inches, the two thicknesses of the mat board, of course, because we're going to have a cap on the top and on the bottom. I just dispense the glue out there with the Elmer's glue. Now, what works even better are these lure lock uh, caps, and they have a blunt nose tip needle on it and a little cap, perfect for applying glue on the edge of your cube again link below for those now another way to make a cube is to make the four center pieces out of two inch strip or just slightly less than two inch and you're going to cut each one of those to the one thickness less than two inches so we can overlap them have a piece of bristol board and then the thickness of the bristol board itself that will make the side of the cube we're going to add the glue just like we did before and we're going to fold that up into our square box. I use uh, pinner's tape to hold everything together after it's been glued from the uh, PVA. By the way, that PVA needs to be thinned down with just a little bit of water before you put it in the squeeze bottle so you can dispense it nice and even. So we'll let that dry. I'm going to use a square and a weight again, and we'll put a little bit of weight on top to keep that all nice and square. Once it's dry, take off the uh, tape. I'm going to put a little glue on both ends here. And we're going to use a little bit of cardstock. It's very thin, but still pretty strong. And you 
most likely won't even see that thickness uh, on the top and the bottom. And we're gonna glue that on. Put the other piece of cardstock on here. We'll put a little weight on there. We'll let that set maybe five, ten minutes, no more than that. And then we'll be able to uh, trim it. Each edge just running right along the cardstock to get a nice clean, simple, quick edge. And you ask, you know, why trim it like this? It's just going to be much more exact. I could measure it out two by two, but any error in the box won't be covered up. And this is a good way to uh, have a decent box and then just cut it out kind of freehand. Boom, a couple boxes right there. Let's make one out of chipboard. But in this case, we're going to make it a little more architectural. It's going to have a little notch out of it. So if you were making a, a model of an interior space or architectural space, like a house or a building or something like that, chipboard is often used for that. I just uh, mark it with my knife and then I pull my square right up to it and I don't even use a pencil sometimes so just a little bit more efficient here I am laying out the notches that I'm gonna cut out out of the cardboard you cut out your notches on each end make sure you save those two little pieces we are gonna be using those we're gonna put down our tape just like we did all the other boxes you'll notice I don't fold it up to a complete 90 when I put that together that allows me to put a little bit of tension on each of the uh, corners to get it nice and tight and crisp all right we're gonna add our glue just like we did on the other ones right on the edge and of course this lure lock uh, needle blunt nose needle uh, works fantastic for that fold everything up really nice the tape holds everything together that's really key here again we're using a square and a weight hold everything down keep it nice 90 degrees and we're gonna have this nice brown cardboard chipboard cube with a little notch out of it. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the floor on it. So that's not affected by the notch or anything like that. So we'll just lay down our uh, PVA here, drop on the base, and we've got that all set. Now we just gotta work on the other stuff, the little notches that we have here. So we're gonna take those two pieces that we cut out before you need to glue them together in the opposite way that the uh, other overlaps are in the cube. And this will become very apparent when you put it together. Again, you want this piece to be nice and square. Put some weights in between both of them and you let it dry here at a nice 90 degree angle. We're going to lay in a floor. Now it's not worth it to cut out a little tiny piece there and figure out how to get that all connected. I just lay in a floor here. It's nice and tight. And it gives me something to lay these two pieces into. They fit right in, overlapped, just like the outside of the uh, box corner is. We lay in a little bit of glue. And we've got that all put together. I'll put on a little piece of tape just to hold it while it dries. And we're going to put on the top next. All right, we're going to take a little two by two top here lay down our glue like we have before. I'm not gonna bother cutting the inside edges. It's more important for me right now to get these other outside uh, edges looking nice, get everything all lined up, and we'll come back and we'll trim that later on. Put a little weight on here, let that dry. Once everything is dry, I'm gonna freehand cut this just like I did on the uh, previous cube, like we did the top. Very easy to run the knife uh, along the cardboard. Here I am in an awkward position uh, trying to make the cube face the camera. So a little bit of practice, some patience, and a little bit of pre-planning to take into account the thickness of the material that you're using, you can make some pretty nice mock-ups with cardboard, chipboard, or mat board. All right, the next video is gonna be cardboard advanced basics. We're gonna take a look at making cylinders and some softer cube shapes, maybe even a cone. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. You can do that by clicking on the icon in the bottom right of the video or below the video. Give it a thumbs up and follow the channel there as well. If you want to know about upcoming design content and projects that I'm working on, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and my favorite Google Plus links below. Also, don't forget to check out all the design and making gear below. Rock on.
Click here to check out some of the other design and making videos that I have that you might enjoy.